Shoulder dislocation types. Shoulder subluxation and dislocation can be many types, and these are some of the types. Anterior shoulder dislocation, posterior shoulder dislocation, inferior shoulder dislocation, inferior shoulder subluxation, multidirectional shoulder instability, anterior shoulder subluxation, posterior shoulder subluxation. Shoulder separation is a separation of the AC joint of the shoulder, and it is not a shoulder subluxation or dislocation. The anterior shoulder dislocation is the most common type. It's about 95% of all shoulder dislocation. The mechanism of injury is a combination of abduction, extension, and external rotation. The humeral head is dislocated anteriorly from the glenoid, and as it dislocates anteriorly, it will be associated with an anterior inferior labral tear called Bankert lesion. Bankert lesion is usually associated with a high recurrence rate of dislocation, especially in younger patients. As the head of the humerus goes out anteriorly, it will impact against the anterior inferior edge of the glenoid, causing a hill sex lesion in the posterolateral part of the humeral head. In acute traumatic dislocation, Bankert lesion may occur up to 90%, and hill sex lesion may occur up to 80%. What other lesions can be associated with shoulder dislocation? In the elderly patient, dislocation of the shoulder can be associated with rotator cuff tear, especially if the patient is more than four years old. The rotator cuff tear is present in about 30% of patients more than four years old and it is present in about 80% of patients more than six years old with an acute traumatic shoulder dislocation. The axillary nerve is the most commonly injured nerve during shoulder dislocation. The axillary nerve injury can occur up to 5% of the time. Greater tuberosity fractures occur in patients with anterior dislocations that are older than 50 years of age. Posterior dislocation is usually associated with scissors or electric shock. You need to get two views of the shoulder to diagnose it, an AP and axillary view. The AP view may show the light bulb sign, but you must get an axillary view. Here is the coracoid. Here is the glenoid. You know the coracoid anteriorly, and you can see the head going posteriorly. The head looks uncovered, so it is dislocated and dislocated posteriorly. When you examine the patient, you will find lack of external rotation of the shoulder compared to the other side. The posterior dislocation is rare. It's only 5% of all shoulder dislocations, but it is missed quite frequently. Reverse Bankert lesion, reverse hill sex lesion, and lesser tuberosity fracture of the humeral head may be associated with a posterior dislocation. Inferior dislocation of the shoulder. 
In inferior dislocation, the arm is abducted between 110 and 160 degrees, which is almost like the Statue of Liberty position. This is a more severe and significant injury. Inferior dislocation of the shoulder may be associated with neurovascular injury or a cuff tear. Try to get an MRI early for this injury. Inferior subluxation of the shoulder. It is often confused with shoulder dislocation. The axillary radiograph view is normal in these patients. Inferior subluxation is caused by deltoid muscle atony. Muscles of the shoulder has lost its strength to maintain the position of the humeral head within the joint. And the treatment is by physiotherapy and the electric stimulation. How about shoulder instability? There are three types. Multidirectional instability of the shoulder. Anterior shoulder instability. And posterior shoulder instability. Multidirectional instability of the shoulder. It is atraumatic dislocation with general hyperlaxity. It is usually atraumatic, bilateral, with hyperlaxity in all planes, and may be seen in swimmers, gymnastics, volleyball athletes. Patient may have collagen disorder or generalized hyperlaxity. In examination, there will be increase in external rotation with the arm to the side due to rotator interval laxity. And the patient will have a positive sulcus sign. The initial treatment is usually physiotherapy for at least six months before considering surgery of inferior capsular shift. TOPS is an traumatic anterior shoulder instability. It is traumatic unilateral with bankered lesion requiring surgery. There is a high recurrence rate in the young patient. The arm position for anterior subluxation is abduction and external rotation. Patient will have positive anterior instability provocative tests such as load and shift test, apprehension test, relocation sign. The first time anterior shoulder dislocation occurs, patient will get 77% recurring instability with non-operative treatment and the 11% recurrence with arthroscopic stabilization. Posterior instability. In posterior instability, patient will complain more of pain than instability. Such a patient is injured while playing for a football team, especially linemen with the pain being aggravated by blocking movements and relieved by rest. Flexion, abduction, and internal rotation reproduce the patient's symptoms. MRI will show a posterior labral tear. The provocative test will be the jerk test or Kim test. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.